In December 2011, the citizens of Russia delivered a stunning capstone to a remarkable year of political change worldwide. Vladimir Putin's political party, United Russia, suffered a humiliating rebuke in parliamentary elections despite their efforts to control the outcome through blatant and widespread electoral fraud. The fear and intimidation that has increasingly characterized life in Russia under Putin has begun to evaporate. It is still too early to tell whether there will be an attempt to crack down or whether the elites will read the writing on the wall and begin to move toward genuine democracy, free press, and a legitimate legal system. Whatever the short-term trajectory of events in Russia, we believe that the Russian people will successfully claim for themselves the full democracy and political legitimacy that are the birthright of all human beings. When the history of this resurgence of Russian democracy is written, historians will note that the first major figure who dared to stand up to Putin and who rejected fear was Mikhail Khodorkovsky. At a time when Putin was consolidating his control over virtually all aspects of Russian society, Khodorkovsky sought to support genuine political diversity and worked to bring transparency and legitimacy to Russia's largest businesses. Above all, he refused to be intimidated by political bullies and he refused to be driven from the country he loves. He has paid a heavy price for his convictions and his courage, and one hopes that the new spirit of democracy sweeping across Russia will lead to freedom for this brave man. In his own words, and the reflections of others, this is his story. If they want me to be a political immigrant, I won't be. If they want me to be a prisoner, in today's system of behavior, which is now demonstrated, it's easy, please, they can do it. Mikhail chose the most dangerous of all paths, and that was to continue speaking up on behalf of democracy, speaking out against corruption. Um, continuing to fight for the rule of law in Russia and to deploy some of his wealth and some of his power and some of his influence to confront the dangers that Russia was facing. He saw his country being dragged back towards authoritarianism and he wanted to stop that trend. Пашка, привет. Пишу тебе из камеры в матросской тишине. Очень интересный опыт, который, правда, боюсь затянется. I'm writing you all this because I want you to understand me. I want you to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. My dad is a political prisoner in Russia. Uh, before he got to such unfortunate fate, he was the head of Yukos Oil Company. I asked him, Dad, what's, what's going on? What's, what's going to happen next? I mean, I was really naive. I was 18 years old. And he told me that the next thing that the government is probably going to do is to arrest him. I was like, why are, are you still going back? I guess I don't have any other choice. What makes Mikhail a little bit different is that he had everything to lose. This was the richest man in Russia, one of the most powerful and rich men in the world. And I think that adds added meaning to sort of the sacrifices that he has made, because he didn't have to make those sacrifices. Look, Mikhail Khodorkovsky could have actually been a happy man. His, the choice was his in his hands. If he had simply said, OK, look, I give in to uh, Putin. I give up all my political beliefs, not only ambitions, beliefs. And he could have been a very happy man in Russia. 
or he could have left Russia at the very beginning. Some of his colleagues have done so. Therefore, Khodakovsky is a uniquely unique human being. For him, the cause is more important than his happiness. My father was sentenced to nine years in a penal colony in Siberia. In December of 2010, my father was sentenced to another 14 years in jail. I was struck by the ordinary men and women who stood outside that courthouse on a bitter cold snowy day when the police were surrounding the area and that courtroom door was closed. There was going to be no, no justice delivered that day. And people stood across the street um, silently standing in protest. I can't say that we had, that my family had any high hopes for the fair and just ruling to come out of that court, but we thought maybe the sentence is not going to be that harsh. The fact that they gave him almost the maximum sentence permitted tells me that Putin is intent on keeping him in jail for as long as he's in power. Продуманная идея сделать показательный процесс против кого-то из олигархов для того, чтобы остальные перепугались и покорны были власти, не пытались вмешиваться в политику. И... It was not a big shock for the Russians, because we Russians, we know it happens. We... Mostly we don't know when, how, we, we precisely, but this day and this time it became um, clear because many eyes were concentrated on this case because uh, there was a very important, very uh, uh, huge interest to this, uh, huge interest to this case. I think my father has done the right thing. I think the choices he has made were, although incredibly tough for the family, and I can only imagine that they were incredibly tough for himself, uh, but they were in line with what he thought was just and what he thought was right. and. That's the most important for me. He believes in freedom, and he believes in democracy. He said right away, I am going to change Russia. Now, how naive could a man be, and how innocent? He said, I am going to change Russia. Now, why did he say that? Because he believes that Russia needed to hear those words. And when I speak to people who come from Russia, everybody heard those words. And this businessman has decided to um, to start speak freely without fear. I thought that. My country is the greatest and it's the best place to be in the world. Uh, until I saw from a distance what it can do to people that are actually trying to help their own country, their own citizens. This is a matter of using the Russian courts as a weapon to persecute uh, 
a brave and a brilliant opponent that Putin fears and wants to keep locked up for as long as he possibly can. Мне очень не хотелось быть арестованным. Но еще больше я не хотел эмигрировать. И это моя страна. Вот э, в мне очень сильно чувство, что это моя страна. Это мое отечество. Я не могу из него уехать насильно. И вот когда я услышал эти слова от Ходорковского тогда, в 2001 году, который я вам сказал о том, что он не хочет, чтобы ему было стыдно перед детьми, я услышал в нем, вот в его интонации, вот это же ощущение. Это моя страна. For me there is a sense of loyalty to my Russian heritage, to the people that I have known and still know uh, back home. I feel that my family has to be part of the same, the same country, the same spirit that my relatives, my friends, my Russian friends share. But that does not stop me from being disappointed in the country as a whole. Initially, Khodorkovsky quarreled not with Putin himself, but with people around Putin. And the problem is that Putin's friends, they all come from secret services. And they're not really people who know how to do business or even how to rule the country. They know how to destroy enemies. If there are no enemies, uh, they must be thought out. But they managed, these friends, to persuade Putin that Khodorkovsky is the enemy of Putin, that he wants to be a president, that he wants to write parliament, that he wants to run Duma. And the face of destiny, at least for him, is Putin, but for others as well. That he is a small Stalin, Putin. A small Stalin without concentration camps. But like, like the other. Uh, he decides who shall be free, who shall not, who shall live, who shall die, who shall be hungry, and who shall not. If the authorities want to persecute somebody, they can, irrespectively of uh, is there any crime in the actions of that or not, this person. It shows that there is no, there is no court system here. There are, there are some courts, many judges, but there is no Court in understanding of in, in sense of justice. Наши суды, к сожалению, поступают не по закону, а по указаниям власти. На стороне нет независимого суда. Ну, такое крупное дело, как дело Ходорковского, конечно, решалось на самом высоком уровне. Human rights are human rights. What makes them human rights is that it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor, it doesn't matter whether you're good or bad, it doesn't matter whether you are popular or unpopular. These rights are yours by virtue of being a human being. My father was an avid sportsman and, uh, well, the proper American term, sorry, the proper American term is athlete. My father was an avid athlete and he would always tackle me. The moment he saw me after, you know, being away for a week or so, he would tackle me to the ground like there was no tomorrow and he was always repeating that. If you're not lazy, by the time you're 18, you should be able to overpower me. <laughs> um, so, we'll try that out <laughs> once, he, once, once he's out. <laughs> we'll give it a shot. I think I'm able now.
This man is in jail, has been in jail for years. He's going to stand more years. And who knows? If Putin really uh, wins, he, he can keep him in jail with, uh, under new, new accusations until he dies. And therefore, I think uh, we must work harder, not only for his sake, but for ours as well. I am so touched by this case. That's why uh, being a human rights lawyer, lawyer for those who cannot pay even for their defense, suddenly I was uh, so uh, touched by this story that uh, I have decided that if this is really a human rights case, I have to help this person. Wherever and whenever a person or a group claim their right to be free, they speak on behalf of all people. And that's what he has done. And that's what we are doing. It goes beyond a person, beyond an individual. When we uh, fight the Russian system and try to uh, make them understand that this is a fight that will continue as long as he is in, in, in jail, we do that for all the other people who are victims of injustice. And each time, therefore, we speak for Khodakovsky, it transcends Khodakovsky. It goes far beyond a person. Расспрашивал меня о том, что же такое общественная организация. А правда ли, что люди в общественных организациях работают всего за 100 или за 200 долларов в месяц. Как это может быть? Что же у них за мотивация у этих людей? Спросил его, а, собственно говоря, а что вас-то в этом интересует? Для чего вам вот этот разговор со мной? Он сказал... Замечательную фразу. Вы знаете, у меня растут дети, и я очень хочу, чтобы мне было не стыдно перед моими детьми. Только я не знаю как. I will tell her that her grandfather loves her very much and even though he can't be with her, he is trying to make the country where he was born and where one day we hope to return a better place for kids like her. the heat. And really, you know, this is the dilemma of human rights activists. We don't have guns. We don't have armies. We don't have great economic power. We have the power of the moral cause that we are trying to advance. We have our voices. And I deeply believe that those very gentle instruments that we have at our disposal can change hearts and sometimes can, can change the world. <laughs>